Hi, Charlie Thorburn here. Welcome to Mordor Gun Dogs. It's blowing a hooli up here, so we've actually come down off, off the top of our hill, uh, down the drive to some little bits of woodland. We've got at the bottom of our farm road, and uh, we're going to do a little training session down here with Waffle. Now, Waffle has never been down here before, so this could all go terribly wrong, but we're going to get him out. I'm going to just do a little bit of obedience on the road with him, get him focused on me, and then I'm going to do some hunting through the woods with him. So we'll see how we get on. So first thing is, is when we get him out the back of the car, he's got to wait at the door. So we've, some of you've probably seen me doing some uh, training where we get them to wait at the door. So it's just wait, wait, wait. Now, when you're doing this, I'm not here like, oh, no, wait there. I'm not wrestling with him. I'm not fighting with him. I want this to all be calm, relaxed and in control. If you give the vibe that you're in a panic, the dog's going to go, oh, he's in a panic and start trying to take control. Whereas if you go, I'm in charge. This is what's happening. The dog goes, oh, he's in charge. This is what's happening. So wait. Now, if he goes to come out, we just push him back, wait. We use the door. Every time we say wait, we use the door just to make him wait. Now, you probably can't see Waffle very well because he's sitting behind the pillar. So what we want is him looking at us like that, saying, can I come out? Can I have permission? Now, it's really important, this kind of, this constant, everything you're doing, you're just looking for the dog to ask your permission. You're looking for the dog to know that they're with you and it's not just, oh, I'm out the door and I'm off. Someone came for a lesson yesterday and they said, oh, our major problem is, is we're worried about the dog running off. And what do they do? They're out in the back of the car and they let the dog out without a lead. And I was like, get your dog. And they were like standing there calling the dog. And, uh, and he, you know, they had to sort of, he didn't go very far. He was a nice little dog. He, didn't, he wasn't going to run off, but he went off and he had a sniff around and things. And they were, they were just pretty relaxed about it. And yet the first thing they'd said to me was, oh, we're worried he's going to run off. So you've got to think about these things. If I let a dog out and there's a pheasant just there, he's probably going to chase it. So I've got to be in control. Wait. Now, the next thing is we just get our lead. Wait. And we pop the lead. Wait. We pop the lead on him. If he then thinks, oh, look, the lead's on. That's my cue to come out. Then we just leave the lead on and we go through the whole process. Now, sometimes I might even just shut that and just walk around the buggy. Okay. Just to kind of as a reset. So I've walk, walked around, I've just done a reset, and then I come back, and if he comes out, we tell him to wait. Now, because he tried to push out, I might do it again. But what I'm, what I'm basically doing is I'm showing him, I'm showing this little dog that he can't preempt what's going to happen. It's about what I say is going to happen, not what he wants to happen. Okay? And then when we're ready, we just call him out. Now, it's quite a big jump off here for Little Waffle. So as he comes out, I'm just going to, I'm just going to help him down. Okay? An older dog who's all developed and fully grown, we'd let them jump in and out of this, no problem. But we don't want Waffle coming off here and falling or when he goes back in, we don't want him hitting his head or anything. Yeah. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of heel work up and down the road here. Waffle, Waffle, heel. So just usual on the left, varying my pace, speeding up, slowing down. He's being very good. He's just, he's totally got this heel thing now. It's really, it's just a matter of going through the process rather than, rather than having to worry about training him anymore. He, he, you know, he's done it so many times now that it just is completely instinctive. And, that, and that's really what we're looking for. I'm just going to grab my hat so I don't get scratched as we go through the undergrowth. And then we'll, we'll, let, him, we'll let, let him rip. Come on in. Wobble, yeah. Come on, little man. Come on, wobble. Wobble, yeah. Wobble, yeah. come on in. He's just learnt to cock his leg. Waffle, come on. Waffle, come on. Good boy. Good boy, come on in. So we're just hunting him through these sort of broken branches and cut trees and things. We're just, you know, getting him into becoming a spaniel. This is really the kind of the, the ground that he's going to be working in. Come on, little man. Come on then. Go on then. Good boy. Good boy. And if he gets a bit sticky, I'm walking right the way through the cover with him because I want him to go through the cover. I don't want him to skirt around it. Waffle. Here. Come here. So any of you who've seen some of, uh, 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 some of Waffle's other videos, he started to get a bit sticky in the, uh, up in the field where he's used to going training. It, it's kind of lost its mojo for him. He's a bit like, mm, we're out in this field again. We've come into this wood and we've obviously got a pheasant feeder just here. You know, there's things here, there are birds here, not right now, but there, you know, there's smells and it's somewhere new and he's really kicked up a few gears and, 
And so any of you who sort of watched him before and thought, oh, you know, he's sort of pottering around, he doesn't really hunt very well. And I've said, it doesn't worry me because, because I know it'll come. Well, you can already see the difference. We come into somewhere interesting and he's ready to go and ready to, ready to be a gun dog. Okay, so we've just done a little loop of about 50, 60 meters. He's been pretty good. I've had to work to keep him close, but he stayed nice and close. We're definitely not at the stage where I can just walk through here with my hands in my pockets, smoking a fag, letting the dog do his job. Okay, he's got to be, we've got to be with him and encouraging him into all under these trees and, you know, getting involved. And also we've got to stop him going too far out because a leaf will blow and he's still likely to sort of tear off. Now, it's quite a nice bit of woodland, this is quite open, so I can see him all the time. I'm not going into places where I can't see him. Oh, good boy. Good boy, here. What for here? So I'm really working just to keep him hunting and he's getting into the bracken and he's having fun. Come on, Waffle. But he's also very much becoming a little gun dog, okay? Good boy. Good boy, Waffle. So he's, he's done some hunting in the, in the fallen trees. He's done a bit through the bracken. He did his healing at the beginning of the, demo, uh, the, of the, the session. Now we've got a bit of open woodland here. If I let a young dog hunt through open woodland, they're gonna, you know, they like cover, they like undergrowth. So he's gonna go zooming through this bare ground and into the next bit of bracken or the next fallen tree. And then he instantly he's gonna be too far away from me. So as I get to the end of this little bit, I've popped him back on a lead and um, we're gonna do a little bit of healing in here and then I'm gonna move to the next bit of cover and let him hunt again. Quite often when you're, when you're working a dog on a, in a beating line or you're just out for a walk, when you've got bare open woodland like this, that's when your dog's gonna get a scent and gonna run. Because whatever's been here hasn't hung around in the open long because they, they're more vulnerable. So they've gone off to the cover as well, so that's what happens with the dog. So you've got to think about that. If you're in mown grass or you're in an open bit of woodland, the dog's not gonna be so easy to stay, keep, keep them close. Whereas you saw him in that bracken and he was all in underneath and having a great time. But we get into the open ground and I know he's more likely to zoom off. And because I know that, I pop him on the lead and uh, just to ke or keep him close, but because, I'm, because I know he's gonna sort of potentially zoom off, I thought, well, there's a nice bit of open ground. I'll pop him on the lead and I'll do a bit of heel work with him again, just to keep that ticking over. Waffle, heel. So I'm just gonna walk around here and just go around the trees, just constantly varying it, okay? Sit. Sit. Gonna do a little sit and stay. So I just drop the lead, tell him to sit, go back to him. Ah, 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 ah. No, 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 you're being silly, aren't you? Heel. No, no, waffle, sit. Good boy. So I'm never turning my back on him. I'm always keeping an eye on him. You know, you can see he's such a funny little chap. He's just always sort of like, oh, what are we doing? He's so happy to be out. But we've got to be careful that we don't let that become sort of silliness and him just being a clown all the time. We want that kind of character. We want the fun. We want the kind of fact that he wants to be with me and jump around, but I don't want a complete bloody idiot um, who who's just sort of thinks everything's just a joke. Uh, so, so it's just getting that balance. I don't, want to, I don't want to be tough on him and discourage him wanting to be with me, but I also don't want to just let him leap around all the time. So it's really important that you, you kind of have a little bit of like a work time and a bit of play time with the dog. So it's okay to be a bit more serious, get them to do their jobs, and then you can go and roll around on the grass with them or in the house or something. So you, you've almost got like, right, we're on duty, you've got to behave, we're off duty, we can have a bit of fun. And quite often, not so much at this time of year because I tend to get covered in mud or whatever, but certainly in the summer, I'll do a training session and then I'll just sit on the lawn with them or sit on a bit of grass or on a tree stump or something and just have a bit of a play and a bit of one-to-one -one bonding time with the dog. Um, not so important for someone who's got one dog in their house because they can do that in the house. But obviously we've got lots of dogs that we're training and it's really important that we just, we, we remember their dogs and their 
you know, family dogs and we want them to be, we want to love them, we want to hang out with them. We don't want it just to be work, 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 back in your kennel, work, 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 back in your kennel. That's not the life we, we sort of pick for our dogs or the dogs that we're training. So it's really key for us to make sure we have that kind of, um, that good relationship with them that it's, you know, we're pals, we're best pals as well as being boss and, you know, boss and dog kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to take him off. I'm going to do a bit more hunting down here. And again, a short session with Waffle. I haven't brought a tennis ball with me today, stupidly. I left it up at the up at the house, but it doesn't matter. We don't have to do a retrieve with them every day. But I'm going to do a bit more uh, hunting through this bracken, and then we're going to and then we're going to call it a day with him. So I've brought him on the lead back down to another bit of bracken. I'm going to take the lead off. Remember, sit, sit. No, Waffle, sit, sit. When I take the lead off, he's got to sit. He's got to be patient, and then one then one more. One more. Good boy. Good boy. And there's a nice fallen tree here with some bracken over the top of it. So it's just a good obstacle for him to kind of work around. Good boy, Waffle. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Good boy. And he's in under there, under the bracken, smelling things. We quite often see woodcock down here. Waffle, come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on. We quite often get woodcock in here, so... You know, the cocker, the woodcocker, that was what their job is, getting under the bracken and finding the woodcock. So that's just what he's learning to do. Come on. Good boy. So I give him a call on the whistle. I back away. I back away. So I'm re whenever I'm calling a dog, I'm always backing away from them. Remember the other videos, run away from your dog. And, and uh, you know, we're, 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 we're encouraging him to come to us quickly by, by leaving. So we pop him, he's done another little bit of hunting. So he's had three nice little hunting sessions. He's had two walk to heel sessions. He's had some sitting and staying. He's had some chewing, some tree guards that me and my kids need to come and pick up. And, uh, and now we're just gonna take him back to the buggy. He's been a good little dog. Not achieved a lot today, but we've come to a new, new different environment. And uh, hopefully he's learned something, even just simple things like how to navigate his way through some new undergrowth, some new terrain and not get completely carried away and take off into the middle distance. Waffle, I don't think we want you eating that, pal. Come on. Heel. So we just walked back to the buggy. Now, Waffle's pretty keen. He thinks he should be on the front seat. So he, <laughs> he, he, um, he hops straight onto the front seat, no bother. We, we want him to go in the back. Now, as an older dog, I know when Waffle goes to his new home, he will be going on the front seat of uh, of one of these machines so it's something you know we want to teach him but at the moment he's got to remember he's a dog and he's a young dog so he needs to know his place so, so before he does come on waffle now i actually if i'm totally honest i thought he'd make a complete meal of that i didn't think that was going to work quite as well um he just jumped up onto this and it's quite a difficult you know you look at that it's quite tricky for a dog it's pickup trucks and these things with a tailgate, you know, they quite often misjudge it and they hit their head. Young dogs especially hit their head off that. Obviously, this is a bit lighter, it's going to move, but he's quite small. But I've seen a few dogs over the years take on the back of a big Hilux pickup tailgate and smack themselves. And then it puts them off getting the back of the car. So normally when we're doing this, we keep them on a lead. We do it a bit better than we did just now. Um, keep them on a lead, make sure they get their feet up and they're encouraging to jump in. Obviously, the other thing is about this is is it's got another lift as well. So if this was on the deck here, it would be easier for them, but he's got to kind of go up and then under, quite often they, they might end up in there. So you just got to, you just got to be sensible about this. A young dog, he doesn't know about how to jump in and out of this. Even an older dog who'd never been in here before, wait, wait, even an older dog, we'd very much want to be here so that we, we kind of caught them coming in and caught them going out. Okay, waffle. Good boy. Now he's got a nimble little chap, so, but I thought I would just get him out and get him to do it again so he practices, because practice makes perfect. And a bit like us, Waffle gets out what he, get, what, what he puts in. So um, I hope you've all enjoyed that. And you know, we'll keep going over Christmas with our weekly or bi-weekly Waffle training. But um, in the meantime, have a good Christmas uh, 2023. And uh, if not before, we'll see you at the beginning of 2024. Thanks for watching.